Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall see how to calculate auto covariance of a random walk and we shall also look at a couple of practice problems. <coughs> so for a random walk, we have a white noise and then this is the random walk model. Initial condition is uh, the starting point is zero. Recall that this random walk has this alternative representation. So we have seen it earlier in the class. So we should use this result to calculate the autocovariance function of this process. So suppose we want to calculate autocovariance at time points 3 and 4. So x3 would be w1, w2 plus w3. x4 is this entire sum. So I have w1, w2, w3 here and they, these terms appear here as well. w4 right, does not appear on this side. So if you open out the covariance, right, this is what you're left with. Covariance or other variance of w1 plus variance of w2 plus variance of w3. So what you have is 3 times sigma squared. You can also rewrite 3 as a minimum of 3 and 4, right? So this is covariance uh, function at time points 3 and 4. And we want to bring both of these numbers into this um, final answer. So 3 can be written as minimum value between 3 and 4. So if you wanted to generalize that to any points S and T, what you would have is a minimum of S and T times sigma squared. So go ahead, pick any two values for S and T. So maybe S can be 3 and T can be 5. Um, and see how this calculation works out. This will give you a better feel, right? Of uh, It will give you a better feel of uh, this entire calculation. So here is a practice uh, problem for you. So I've given you a process, a, a time series process, and you'll find the mean and the autocovariance function for that process. So I will also post this uh, separately on Canvas uh, as practice problems. So here is another problem that we, we shall take a deeper look at. So W is white noise. And what I have here is a general MAQ process. So this is moving average of order Q, right? So, so uh, until now we have looked at MA1 or maybe MA2, like with specific numbers, but this is a more general, right? So this is an MA process or moving average process of order Q. Um, so there is a typo here, typo here. This should be AQ times W. TQ, right? So take note of this typo. I'll uh, fix it uh, before posting um, the PDF of this presentation uh, on Canvas. So show that, right? So autocovariance function of x. So at time t, and if we go back, right? So t minus k, where k is greater than q. So autocovariance between, say, the current time, and if I go back more than q steps, right? So we're t minus k, that means we're going back uh, k steps in the time series, and k is greater than q, so we're going back more than q steps. So if you do that, then autocovariance is zero. But if you um, take smaller steps, that is, if you don't go further than the q steps, then the autocovariance function has this form. So autocovariance between t and t minus k, right, where k is from 1 to q, has this particular form. So this is the moving average process. So let's see. So this is um, xt minus q plus 1. So I'm going back more than q steps, right? So uh, what I want to show is that covariance between this and this is going to be 0. So before showing any uh, general result like this, right, it's a good idea to take a few specific numbers and do some calculations to get a feel of how the calculations uh, evolve. Okay, so 
I have here one specific term. So I've gone back q plus 1 steps. And um, so what I have here, so, so this is the pattern, right? So q, so xt minus q plus 1, first of all, it can be written in this way, right? So it's a moving average q process, right? So we have to go back q steps. Uh, so this is going to be wt, this is the current time point, right, t minus q minus 1, times a1, you go back one step. So if you go back one step, it's going to be t minus q minus 2, right, so that's what you have here. a2, you go back two steps from the current time point, so t minus q minus 1 minus 2 is going to be uh, t minus q minus 3, and so on. And finally, a q times, you go back q steps from the current time point. So current time point is t minus q minus 1, and I go back q steps from the current time point. So I'm writing this based on this first equation, right? xt, the current time point, a1 times one step back, a2 times two steps back from the current time point, so on. a q times q steps back from the current time point. So I'm using the same pattern to write expression for this second uh, equation here. So note that, right, so these two terms, if I want to find covariance between these two terms, um, so if they have no terms in common, the covariance is going to be zero, right, because all the white noise terms are uncorrelated with each other. So let's see. So xt has terms from wt to wt minus q and xt minus q plus 1 or t minus q minus 1, which is the same thing, has uh, the latest uh, time point is this. It's, it starts from t minus q minus 1 and it goes back to t minus q minus 1 minus q. So basically xt and xt minus q plus 1 have no terms in common. So if you were to calculate covariance, it would be 0. So uh, if you were to take any point s, right, which is greater such that distance between s and t is strictly greater than q, then xs and xt will have no white noise terms in common and therefore the covariance is 0. Now, I would recommend you take another example. So, maybe you can take t plus q plus 1, maybe. So, go t steps ahead instead and I'll verify that covariance between xt and xt plus uh, q plus 1 is still 0. So, this was the easier part in this, right? So, let's go to the next part when the covariance is not 0. So, this is our uh, moving average uh, Q process. Again, there is a typo here, right? This W, it's AQ multiplied by WT minus Q. So let's look at uh, one time step back, right? XT minus 1. So XT minus 1 is going to be this current time point, white noise at the current time point, which is T minus 1, plus A1 times white noise, one step back. So T minus 1 step back from T minus 1 is t minus 2, a2 times 2 steps back, that's wt minus 3 and so on, a q times um, q steps back from the current time point, so t minus 1 minus q. So similarly, uh, go ahead and uh, see if you're able to work out the expression for xt minus 2 without looking at the screen preferably. So now we know how to write these terms, let's look at the covariance calculation. So covariance between xt minus 1, remember we have to find, we have to look at all the white noise terms that are shared between the two um, time series. So the first one is wt minus 1. So when I calculate covariance of a1 wt minus 1 and wt minus 1, I'm going to be left with a1 times the variance of wt minus 1. So it'll be a1 times sigma square or sigma 2 square. So let's leave the sigma 2 square apart uh, aside for a while. 
So I have this A1 coefficient. So I have, I'm going to write it here. So the second common term is Wt minus 2. The coefficients are A2 and A1. So I have written them here. So uh, there is also going to be the variance term sigma square, but like I said, let's keep that aside for now. Next common term is uh, t minus 3, wt minus 3. So the coefficients are a3 and a2 and so on. You can keep going one term back and finally you will be left with this term. So uh, from xt we have aq and from the bottom term we will have aq minus 1. How do I know the bottom term is q minus 1? I look at the pattern from all of these terms, right? So it was a2, a1, a3, and then a2. Uh, if we followed up some more calculations, we would have a4, a3, and so on. So basically, I'll have a q followed by um, a q minus 1, right? So one subscript less. And here is the variance term that I had kept aside. So now if you look at uh, xt and xt minus 3 and if you want to calculate the covariance between these two points, again we should look at the common white noise terms uh, between these two series. So the first uh, common term, so Wt we don't see in Xt minus 3, W1, W2 are also not present. So the first common term is uh, Wt minus 3, right? So I have and uh, I have only Wt minus 3 here, so there is no coefficient. So I write down the common coefficients A3. So again, the covariance term or the variance term is still there. I'm going to keep that aside for now. So so let's look at the next common term. So that's Wt minus 4. Uh, so their coefficients are A4 and A1. So I have A4 and A1 here. Um, so the next term would be A5 and A2. A5 and A2. So now if you look at the pattern, right? So uh, there is, if you do 4 minus 1, you get 3. So this term right, is, is 3 time units away from 4, 2 is 5 minus 3, basically. And we keep on continuing, the last term is going to be a q from xt, so I have a q here, and then the lower term is going to be q minus 3, so just following this pattern, right, 4, 1, 5, 2, q, 3. And finally, I have the variance term here. So now I'm just going to put all of the terms again on the slides and let's see if we can extract a pattern from all of these calculations, right? So I know that covariance between xt and t minus 2 has this form, t t minus 3 has this form. So how about t t minus k, right? So for t t minus k, my first term is going to be a k, right? So for tt minus 2, the first term was a2, tt minus 3, the first term was a3, tt minus k, the first term will be a k. Then here, after a2, the next term was a3, a1. Here, after a3, I had a4, a1, right? So a k, I'll have a k plus 1 times a1. Again, here, so after 3, A3, we have A4. After A4, we have A5. So after K plus 1, we have K plus 2 here. So the second term here, right? So A1, then A2. Again, A2 here. So this is again going to be A2. So basically, we are trying to do pattern recognition and generate this pattern, but in a more general fashion right so the last term is going to be a q here and remember for t minus 2 i had q minus 2 here for t minus 3 q minus 3 for t minus k the last term will be q minus k and finally we have the variance term so it's a good idea to redo this calculation on your own um,
so this is all about auto covariance function so next we shall see or we shall take a look at how to calculate autocorrelation functions. So autocorrelation involves um, calculating autocovariance, right? And it also involves calculating mean functions. Um, so make sure that you've done all the problems and exercises relating to the mean and autocovariance calculations. You will need them for the autocorrelation uh, function. So that's all for this video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.